Hi, thank you for asking me to talk on your endometriosis masterclass about ultrasound imaging for endometriosis. My name is Suzanne Johnson. So to look at bowel nodules, you really need to go through the posterior fornix because uh, this is where you'll be closer to bowel. This is bowel here. Uh, you um, will be able to see nodules and adhesions if, you, if they're there, if you look carefully. So how do we get from the anterior uh, fornix to the posterior fornix in an antiverted uterus? I'll show you how. We need to move it from the anterior to the posterior fornix. So here you can see that I'm just going to very gently withdraw the probe a little bit, angle it backward toward the sacrum and stretching the vagina over the end of my probe. And here I am in the posterior fornix cervix is there. A little bit of free fluid and then I'm going to withdraw my probe again in a minute and you'll see a lovely normal peritoneal reflection there. And here I am back in the anterior fornix. So when you're in the posterior fornix, uh, you can look at bowel and people say, I don't know where I am when I'm in the posterior fornix, but you do because you are right here. The uterus and everything's been moved off to the side. So what can you see? You can see vagina, you can see peritoneum, maybe with the uterus sacral ligaments, depending where you are, some free fluid. And then this is the bowel and it's composed of many different layers. So the outer white serosa, then a triple layer of muscularis, the uh, dark white, dark layer. The outer layer is longitudinal muscle fibers, some fibrous tissue, and the inner circular fibers. Muscularis, the most important layer here. Then we've got submucosa and mucosa together, submucosa and mucosa together. Then again, we've got muscularis and serosa. So this is the anterior wall, posterior wall, and that's the lumen. The muscularis layer is the most important layer. It's easily seen because it's a triple layer. Um, and when it's involved with endometriosis, it looks like this. It becomes um, a very dark hypoechoic shape um, outlined by white tissue. So thick muscularis layer. And you can see um, how I do this, how I find this layer in the next slide. Um, you withdraw the probe a little bit below the cervix uh, and then you look for that layer, which you can see it just there. There's serosa, there's the muscularis. And then keep your eye on that layer as you very gently introduce the probe. You can see I'm following it, I'm following it. And you can see I'm tracking it through the second rectal curve. You can see that's all muscularis and I'm going to adjust my position a little bit and keep going. And you can often track muscularis up to the uterine fundus, but not always. So tracking that layer through the posterior fornix, there's the second rectal curve. And you can see that um, you can track muscularis. Sometimes then you will come across an abnormal bit of muscularis and it will have muscul normal muscularis going in and out of it. Uh, and it is highlighted by very bright white, which is the submucosa and mucosa. Normal muscularis on the other side, the posterior wall, is never affected by endometriosis. And you can see the disparity in the thickness of the bowel wall. Colour, it doesn't really have much vascularity. If it did, then you need to think of other pathology. So just looking at this bowel nodule, again, in longitudinal plane, just going slightly from side to side, you can see normal muscularis going in and out of it. And you can see that this is a nodule of very disrupted muscularis, very disrupted and thick. What you can also see in this slide is that the posterior vaginal fornix is normal and you've got some fibrosis here with nodules of deep endometriosis in it. And sometimes you've got all three layers affected, as in this example, got very thick posterior vaginal fornix, retrocervical fibrosis, deep endo within it, uh, and then also this bowel nodule. The bowel nodule just there you can see that they're all attached to each other this is some more deep endometriosis so in this example you've got a vaginal ligaments and bowel all affected so that would be a recto vaginal nodule then you can say where in the bowel is this uh, nodule so this one is in the lower rectum as we're below the level of the torus you can track muscularis there and almost immediately there's this nodule we're nowhere near the internal os so this is lower rectum, and you can see it, of course, again there. 
This one involves the lower and the upper because the line through the internal os to the torus point of attachment of the uterus sacral ligaments defines lower rectum and upper rectum. Um, and so in this video clip, you can see again, tract muscularis as you enter the vagina. And then there's this big plaque that goes right across the level of the torus. This pe person had a very large upper rectum and sigmoid uh, plaque of endometriosis. You can see it starts below the level of the fundus, but it goes up and over. Um, there's a big ovarian endometrioma there as well. This one goes up and over. Sometimes you have more than one bowel module. If you have one, you need to look uh, everywhere else. So this one is a very large stenosing uh, retrocervical module. It's in the torus, it's in the uterosacral ligaments and the lower rectum, we're below the level of the torus. Then as I went higher near the left ovary in the sigmoid colon, I found two more nodules of deep endometriosis. Important to examine the whole bowel if you can. There's one and there's the other. You can see the normal muscularis going in between them. And we look at the angle, so as in, in this nodule, you can see that it's in the upper rectum, the torus is about there, so this is upper rectum, and it's relatively flat, 180 degrees, and it occupies less than half of the bowel diameter. This is transverse view of this, so this is right, this is left, let's say, and this is occupying less than half of the uh, diameter of the, the bowel. When you have a curved bowel module, um, we also here would be thinking about stenosis. This is how you measure the bowel module, and this is the this is the angle between them. That's the depth, and that's the width. Um, so a retracted mushroom nodule, if the angle is less than 90, we're going to think of bowel stenosis. If um, more than half the bowel circumference is affected, and if the AP diameter is more than a centimeter. Then we're always asked, what's the distance to the anal verge? And this book is superb in chapter 12. Um, the authors describe that uh, the bowel curves. There's the first rectal curve at three centimeters from the border, the second one at eight centimeters. The peritoneal reflection, if it's present, is at seven, the same as the lower edge of the cervix. And then the torus is at eight to 10 centimeters. The problem with working out where your bowel nodule is in relationship to these other landmarks is that they are variable. Um, if you have an obliterated patch of Douglas, you can't use these uh, quite often. Um, so what I tend to do is I say, is it above the level of the torus or is it below the level of the torus? Um, and then try to estimate the distance to the anal verge uh, in a different way. And this is how I've been doing it. Um, I've got an extended view, a uh, transvaginal probe. As I'm inserting it, I'm tracking muscularis. There is the bowel nodule. Um, and then I measure that, measure it to the point where I can't see muscularis anymore. And then I add three centimeters for the first rectal curve. So then we've got a distance to the anal verge of 83 millimeters. The other thing you can do is you can do 3D and 4D. 3D can be really quite useful if the patient's very tender and you can't get a good uh, measurement for length or, or width for that matter. Um, and also you can, uh, you can really judge submucosal involvement, which is again a strong marker for stenosis. Thank you.